birth our vision through physical fitness, mental fitness, spiritual fitness, and financial fitness. So I know I'm, I'm getting full of myself already. So I hope you guys are enjoying as well. So we're going to keep this moving. And our next speaker is Josh Zepes. Did I say your last Perfect, name? actually, yes. <laughs> Good job. Wow. All right, Josh is a corporate America escapee who after a 20 year successful career as a semiconductor engineer and manager, decided that his path in life could not be contained within the walls of the cubicle. After years of building independent and franchise businesses, he found his passion in helping others become the person worthy of success through escaping the endless, pointless, self-defeating cycle of their personal rat race. Josh founded Broke is No Joke as a platform and movement for true freedom. As an author, speaker, poet, and comedian, he shares his talent for exposing the truth that we're not supposed to know under the belief that the truth will indeed set us free. Josh, we welcome you. I just want to officially second everything. <laughs> We can go another two hours on each yeah, of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those quickly, If you have no idea why you get out of your head, maybe you should check that stuff stuffed into your head. Tiptoeing through life, hoping to make it safely to death, wondering why you don't win in the same shortness of breath. You wait for New Year's Day before you get underway. A clean slate, you say, it's set to betray. Because that's what you said last year in the two prior. The three feet of defeat leaving you limbless and tired. What if January 1st was just some made-up rule? Another untrue fact that they teach us in school. Quitting on yourself 11 months too soon? You're comatose on an overdose of excuse. Imagine time is life and you had either to lose. If not now, when? If not you, who do you choose? To write the next chapter, make you a best-selling title as you finally crush your goals and achieve something worthwhile. Yes. Good morning, family. <laughs> I'm not pretending to be a rapper, don't worry. Just a little, <laughs> little bum I wrote real quick. Uh, so good morning, champions. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> I see some of you like, did you just say good morning? <laughs> Does this boy know what time it is? <laughs> Actually, I've got two watches, so yes. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to guess somewhere along the way, somebody told you that good morning was about time of day. But it's not. It's about making a decision. It's about deciding right now to have it start over. Anyone have any challenges earlier today? Yes. Huh. Yeah, right? We all had challenges. Are you kidding? Maybe traffic. For two hours. <laughs> yeah, we all had challenges. Right? So guess what? That was yesterday. Why don't we just start a new day right now? Wow. Why don't we just clean the slate? Let's start over. It's a decision, right? So if we're gonna start a new day right now, good morning. Good morning. Isn't that appropriate? Good morning. Good morning. Yes. So let's get to the heart of the issue. I called you guys champions. When was the last time you were accused of being a champion? Doesn't happen that often, does it? Yeah. Does not happen that often. I know some of you are thinking. Well, besides what's this guy talking about? But so you're thinking he doesn't know me. This guy's talking up here about me being a champion. He doesn't know me high on rent. He doesn't know that my like, kids don't talk to me too much anymore. He doesn't know that every day I wonder if it's worth it. I wonder if it's a way out of having multiple jobs or fighting the fight. I'm tired of fighting the fight, Josh. You're right. I don't know you, but I know you. I know where you came from. I don't even care what you guys call it. We're all from the same source, would you agree? Yes. Whatever you call it. And that source is, was, and will always be a source of greatness. That's where we came from. Now, do you have to become that champion? Do you have to take advantage of that? No. I'm not here to tell you you've got to do that. You don't have to do that. We can shirk. We can shirk our responsibility, our greatness. We can hide it. <coughs> but that would be a shame. That would be an absolute shame. 
Because that's where I was. That's where I was. For 37 years, the first 37 years of my life. You see, I wasn't always a freedom fighter. Before this, um, I did 20 years. Well, 19 technically. 19 years. 19 years looking at great walls. 19 years of thinking of my best behavior. You guys know what I'm talking about? Corporate America. That's right. And I don't have a corporate America sob story for you. I'm not here to tell you how terrible it was or any of that kind of stuff. I was actually successful. I climbed the freaking ladder. At the end of my career, multi, multi, six figure, stock options, party, everything you hear about, right? And I thought I had it made. And then one day, everything I thought was right wasn't so right. I wasn't as happy as I wanted to be. I wasn't as wealthy as I needed to be. And I sure as heck wasn't free. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, that's my favorite F word nowadays. It was, a, it was a different F word back then, I promise. But right now, my favorite F word is freedom. So I had to escape. I had to get out. And it took a series of wake-up calls. So what I'd like to do today, I, I want to share some, some stuff about gold crushing. And should you listen to me? I don't know. Probably not. But if you, I want you to say, if you can find one nugget, one thing you can take away from our time together, our life we're spending together, just one, and plant that seed. And if that one thing, that one seed, when you plant it, it creates a harvest for, your, for you or for your family. Mission accomplished. If I piss you off, if I say something that gets under your skin, but it lights the fire under your butt to make you go do something that actually helps you or your family move forward in life. Mission accomplished. I'm happy with that too. Because I do sometimes, I like talking about truthful things. I like being open and honest. I call it open kimono, right? No visuals there. Just, but I like being very, very open. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff out there. People don't tell us the truth. Right? We're lied to about a lot of things. And I was lied to about a lot of things. And now I'm ringing the bell. I'm, I'm the one out there like, hey guys, look at the truth. Here's the matrix. Here's what it looks like. Let's go. Because the truth, the first thing you need for true freedom is you got to be aware that you're not free. Awareness is the first piece, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. how can you change something you're not aware of? So, and I do want permission, I'll have to ask now, just to talk to you and talk with you like adults. Right, and it, it might get might be a tough conversation sometimes, and that's okay. Uh, but like I said, or like you know, the truth will set you free, right? The truth will set us free. Uh, and everything I say, nothing I'm going to say or we're going to talk about is out of judgment or shame or anything like that. It's all out of love, love, care, and concern. So I don't know. This might be the first time someone loves you enough to tell you the truth, to share that truth and have that conversation with you. I hope it's not. But we're going to do that today. Are you guys with me on that? Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So gold crushing. What's the problem? Gold crushing. That's what I was to talk about today. And what's interesting is gold crushing is on my mind right now. I just released a course, an uh, online course called Gold Crushing. And um, it's on pre-sale right now. Really good deal. Uh, but I'm very, very passionate about gold crushing. Here's why. 75% of people in this country quit on their goals by January 31st, quit on their New Year's resolutions. In 30 days, 75% have already given up. And by the end of the year, 92% will have given up. Now that's, by the way, it's not 8% accomplish their goals. I wish that were the case. I'm just saying 8% having given up by the end of the year. Why? There's a lot of reasons why we don't get to accomplish our goals. But there's actually only one reason. But I'd like your help. What are some reasons why people don't accomplish their goals? I'm going to write these down. Lose focus. Lose focus. That's really good. Lose focus. Okay. Why else? Guilt. Guilt. Okay. Procrastination. Uh, the biggest nation in the world. I love it. Procrastination. I don't plan. Sorry? No plan. No plan. Excellent. Discouraged. Discouraged. Okay. Finances. Okay. Lack of support. Ah, lack of support. Motivation. What's that? Motivation. Motivation. Yeah. Oh, 
You guys want to be up here doing this? Awesome. <laughs> you guys should be teaching me stuff. Oh, this is great. They realize, uh, one or two more. They realize how hard it's going to be once they get three or four steps into it. Yeah. Yes. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. They become quitters. There's, there's an emotional side of the change you guys should look up. It's fantastic along those lines. Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Good. Good. These are awesome ones. So I want you to come on a journey with me just for a few minutes. I want everyone to think about, I'm going to give you the one reason why we truly fail on our goals. But then we're going to go into some of these. I want you to think of someone that you love dearly. You can keep your eyes open or closed when it's up to you. Everyone think of someone you love dearly. And I want you to imagine they're on the other side of this wall. They're over there. And you're starting to smell smoke. And you're like, what is that? And you realize that the room that they're in, that your loved one is in, maybe it's your daughter, maybe it's your mom, brother, grandparent, that room is on fire. What are you going to do? I'm going through the wall. You're going through the wall? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. You're gonna break through the wall, you're gonna die trying? Yeah. Does everyone agree with that? There you go. But what if, what if you're running late for work? <laughs> well, what, what, if, what if your program's on TV? Your favorite distraction? TV. What about social media? Someone just posted a cat picture on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What about, uh, what if you're tired? What if you're discouraged? What if you're just procrastinating? What if you're just gonna... Uh, are you gonna procrastinate on that? No. What if you don't have support? What if no one else is here? What if you're the only one here? You're gonna do it anyways, aren't you? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to help me out here. You get these reasons are all excellent and perfectly valid and true reasons why we don't reach our goals. But what you're telling me is that when it's something important like that, nothing can stop you. So let me see if I can sum this up. You're telling me the one reason why we don't achieve our goals is because we don't set a goals worth achieving. That's what it sounds like you're saying. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. When it's important enough, we cannot be stopped. Now, these other things you mentioned, these are important also. You might want to talk about those. <coughs> but for the remaining of my time, I want to talk about the three most important questions that you must ask yourself if you want to achieve anything. And I want to dive into these questions a little bit, and then I want to open up for Q&A about anything. Anything goal-related, goal-crushing, things that are on your mind. Um, hope you're taking good notes with Mr. White and with me, because they say the sharp, uh, the dullest pencil better than the sharpest mind. Right? I'm always, I'm a note taker. Like I take notes on everything. Uh, so these three questions, if you can't answer these three questions, you're gonna have a really difficult time actually achieving your goals. So these are very, very, very important questions. And if you want any details, I'm gonna go into more detail. Let me know when you guys ready for your first question. These are gonna sound so simple. So don't don't expect like this to like you know earth shattering question, by the way. These are gonna be very simple questions. It's just we don't ask our, we don't ask these questions to ourselves anymore. And it's a shame. Okay, first question. What do you want? What do you want? You know, this is one of my favorite questions to ask people. When I do coaching or I'm bringing someone to an escaping the rat race program or something like that, the first question I ask is, what do you want? Why did you get out of bed this morning? What do you want from life, from anything? And we don't have answers. Why do you think we don't have the answer to that question? Why do you think most people I ask is they stumble on it? They just, they just don't know. 
Maybe they don't think about it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Thank you. They don't think about it. When I think, when I found that out, when I realized that no one's even thinking about this question, I asked myself, well, why is no one thinking about it? Because isn't that important? It's an important question. And I started realizing as I talked to folks and people that were my coworkers and people that are still stuck in the rat race, I found out they don't ask that question because they can't have it anyways. I started asking, why don't you think about it? They start telling me, well, what's the point? What's the use, Josh? We're in a society where a lot of people are hopeless. Why am I going to think about the nice house or the car or the life or being on the beach or all the stuff that's my passion if I can't have it anyways? Because that's depressing, Josh. I'm at, why did I think about I'm at a job where I'll never get to that place. I don't have the vehicle to get there. So we don't ask the question anymore. We just give up on asking. Instead of asking it and finding a way, we stop asking. We give up. So this is one of the most important questions you can answer. So what do you want? And I mean specifically, not what do others want for you? Be careful, because that's an easy one. Well, my mom always says I should do this. No, thank you, mom. That's for mom, right? Not what others want for you, and not what you think others want you to do. But in your heart of hearts, when you're alone, when you're journaling, when you're sitting by yourself, ask yourself that question. What do you want? Because what is the destination, isn't it? Henry Kissinger said, if you don't know where you're going, every road will get you nowhere. Right? What is the destination? You've got to know where you're going. Uh, and here's the key with what, knowing what you want. It's my favorite C word, which is uh, uh, the theme of this event is clarity. How clearly can you see it? Can you see it? Can you touch it? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? Can you hold it? Can you experience it? It's one thing to say, I want a new car. It's another thing to say, I want a 2000 Mustang with cherry red leather interior with that little uh, hula girl on the, on the dash. And like, can, can you see, can you smell it? What kind of, what kind of air freshener is in there? Right? Where are the wear spots on the carpet? Where, like, how many miles does it have exactly, including the little white number, right, which is the tenth of a mile? Can you see it that, can you experience it that clearly? Because if you can't see it, forget about eyesight, mind sight. If you can't see it here, you'll never have it here. And I'm going to prove that to you. Uh, here, I'm going to borrow this thing. This mouse, right, this exact one in my hand, how many times was, was this exact mouse made? Millions. No, no, no. This, this is, okay, we'll take millions. That's, that's good. Yeah, one this, this one in my hand. It's made one. Okay. That's the most popular answer. Any other answers? So we have a million and we have one. Any other answers? Between one and a million. <laughs> I'm going to submit to you three times. Let me explain. Did this mouse pop into existence on its own? Did it just go, poof, here I am? Or did someone have to think about it? Someone have to have an idea, right? Yeah, someone has to say, you know, I wonder what it would be like if you just had this device that could move your cursor around on a screen and it kind of looked like this and the shape that fit. I don't know if this would fit my hand. It fit someone's hand, right? It's kind of small. But didn't have to start here. Didn't someone just have to have an idea? And then after they had the idea, which was the first time it was made, has to be put on paper, doesn't it? Because once it's put on paper, what are, what are the materials? What's the specs? What's the size? What's the circuitry? It has to be drawn on paper. And then the third time, it has to be physically manufactured. Well, probably in China somewhere, right? But, so this, everything has to start here. So if you, can't, if you can't see it here, how can you hold it in your hand? Because it's not just going to go poof into your lap. Does that make sense? Very, very key. Okay. Keep on time here. Okay. That's question one. Question number two. Oh, so wait. Let me give you a challenge on question one, if I may. Let me give you a challenge. I would like you to write down the one thing that if you were to accomplish it this year, would make it the best year you've ever had. The one thing that if you were to accomplish it this year, would make this the best year you've ever had. And I don't mean, this doesn't have to be like hitting the peak of Mount Everest kind of goal. 
I just mean something that you can look back on and say, you know what? Of all the crap that happened, of all that stuff, I at least did this. And gosh darn it, that was a good year. Now this was a really good year. Take a second, write down that one thing. If you have more than one, that's fine, but at least have one thing. When I do goal setting for people, when I set up two classes, I always do five Fs. I just throw this in there. Five Fs. I put things in categories to keep it focused and simple. My five Fs are faith, family, finance, fitness, and fun. And I set my goals into those five categories. Faith, which is contribution and helping others. Uh, family, sports family. Finance is business and career. Fitness is every aspect of fitness, like Jeff talked about. Physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. And then fun is kind of the catch-all. Kind of the fun one side. Okay, you guys ready for question number two? <coughs> question number two. And here's what question number two isn't. <coughs> question number two is not why you want it. Because that's what the question I hear a lot. You gotta know your why. You know, why do you want it? That's not my question. Question number two is, why must you have it? It's not why you want it. It's why must you have it? How much will it hurt to not achieve it? They say no pain, no gain, right? You do hear that in the gym. It's true here also. Why? How much will it hurt not to have it? How much will it hurt to not get through this wall? It might hurt going through the wall, but it's to save the life of a loved one. I think nothing compared to that, right? So we break a bone, but we get to save the life of our loved one. Worth it all day long. So why must you have it? When you create that level of need, when you need it so bad, that's all you can think about, that's all you want, you create essentially a vacuum. It's like creating a vacuum. When you have that need and that pull is so great, you create a vacuum. And guess what? Nature doesn't like vacuums. Nature abhors vacuums. Right? Doesn't nature always fill in vacuums? If there's a vacuum, it's like stuff comes rushing at it. So if, you're, if you can really clarify on why much you might you have this thing, and you create that vacuum, you're going to find the research, and you're going to find things filling that void. And that's so key. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so when you so for example, like when you need to eat, you always find food. Isn't that interesting? When you need to breathe, you always seem to find air. So it, it's it's having that need, and that need is great enough. And if your need isn't great, if you don't know why you want that one thing that you just wrote down, change that one thing. That just wasn't the right thing. That's the test. That's the test. Why must you have it? If you can't answer that, if that's not strongly pulling you, compelling you to achieve it, then change your one thing. Go back to the beginning. And that's okay. And your why, here's the key really. Your why is got to be bigger than you. It can't be you. We're the first ones to let ourselves down, aren't we? Yeah. So when we want to go to the gym in the morning, we want to get our, our workout on, and it's 4 a.m. and the alarm's going off, and you're like, snooze. <laughs> I'll try that again tomorrow. I'm really tired. But if you just talked to your doctor the day before and said, if you don't start working out, you're not going to see your daughter go down the aisle and marry her man. You're not going to go see your granddaughter graduate from college. It's a little different why, isn't it now? It's not about you. So your why could be a loved one, your why could be your, your why could be a family member, it can also be an enemy. I believe we should have enemies. Sounds weird, like, oh boy, here this guy goes. I believe we should have enemies. You know, one of the most the thing I appreciate one of the things I appreciate the most about Martin Luther King Jr. is he had enemies. And I don't mean people. He had things that he was he literally gave his life to eradicate. Poverty, inequality, were his enemies. He wouldn't read. I'm sure everyone's read his writings. That's what he absolutely hated. He had those enemies, and he gave his life. He spent his life trying to eradicate those things. So I believe we should have enemies. 
That's another way. So you can do it for something, or you can do it to get rid of something bad. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have an enemy. Maybe there's just so many bad things going on right now, as you know, in every level of government and all this kind of stuff. Find an enemy, right? Make that your mission. My mission is to eradicate ignorance. That's my enemy, is ignorance. My mission as a company, Broke is No Joke, we're going to help in the next five years, by October 3rd, 2025, we're going to help 1% of corporate America get to the next level of freedom. And our measurement stick for that is doubling their income. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, does it? Like 1% 1, 1 of corporate America doubling their income? Here's the crazy part. I did the math behind it, and the math says if I do that, if 1% of corporate America doubles their income, we create $70.6 trillion of new cash flow in this country. That's over three times the current US GDP. Is that significant? And that's good. Guys, that's 1% of corporate America. That's not, that's even another 99% there. Think about how much potential is sitting in our cubicle farms right now. People with talents and skills and passions that we're subduing, that we're keeping down. Anyways, so here's my challenge for you on question number two. When you find that why, I want you to write a letter to the why. I want you to write a little, little stationary. I always like, I always recommend, and it's up to you, I recommend actually writing with your hand. I know that handwriting, I guess, is becoming a lost art. I don't know, but I love handwriting. Um, I say what flows through you sticks to you, so I like to that act. Write a letter to your why. Let them know that you're doing it for them. Let them know you're not going to let them down. In fact, I can say that. I will not let you down. And sign it and give it to them. You can mail it to them, like post, you know, you put a little stamp. Or take a picture of it and text it, that's fine. But write it out a letter. Right? That's my challenge for that one. A lot of us are secret agents. You know, a lot of us just, you can set a goal and don't tell them. You know why? We're afraid we might do it. Accountability. Accountability. So we give up. Nobody knows. Right? No one knows when we give up. So write that letter. So that's the that's the big thing with the letter. You are now accountable. Right? That doesn't mean if you don't do the goal, you don't love them. That's not what that's saying. Well, all right, kind of it is, but that's all right. I tell you what, though. I tell you what, you just raised the stakes on it, haven't you? You just said you just committed to it. You're serious. Anyways. All right. Question number three. How many times? I apologize. I didn't realize the time we started. You know, I didn't even look. You're fine. All right, all right. All right, this is the last question, and then if there's time for Q&A, we'll do it. If not, no big deal. Question number three is, how are you going to get it? How are you going to get it? And this is actually the simplest question of the three. I'm not going to say the easiest, because it takes a lot of work, but it's the simplest. Here's the thing, guys. If you know where you are, and you know what you want, or where you want to be, can't you kind of figure out the middle? Like, if you're in Florida and you want to go to New York, you may not know the exact route. You may not know your mode of transportation. You may not know a lot of things, but you can probably start walking north. Right? You can probably start heading that direction, can't you? And probably figure it out if you had to. Yeah. So, but I'm going to break number three into three parts. Three into three, there you go. So there's three parts to the how. There's the information part of the how. Right? You got to have the information. Let's talk about that one then. <coughs> are, are, are we in the age of information? Yes. Do you agree we're, we're in the age of information? In fact, too much information, if anything. Way too much information. In fact, you know there's a difference between information and wisdom? Yeah. Yes. Right? Uh, uh, one of my old, uh, not my, actually my current uh, martial arts master, is how he described the difference. He says, information, or knowledge, let's say, knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. <laughs> Wisdom is knowing not to put into fruit salad. <laughs> like, that's smart. I'm borrowing that. <laughs> I'm taking that one. That's good, right? So here's the, here's the, here's the biggest piece about information. Biggest piece of advice. If someone said, Josh, if you give me one piece of advice and that's it, just one piece, this is my this is always my piece of advice. Don't listen to broke people on how to get wealthy. Oh. <laughs> Don't listen to the unsuccessful on how to be successful. 
Don't listen to the unhappy. I'm going to be happy. You guys catch my drift? Yeah. Right. Be very careful. Familiarity is not the same thing as competence. Yes, mom loves us. Yes, mom means well. Yes, grandpa wants us to win. Absolutely. Look, my dad, he's been a postal worker and various odd jobs his entire life. Never owned a business, never been wealthy. But he's a hard worker. I got my work ethic from him. And he's a great family man. But I'm not going to go say, hey, dad, how do you become wealthy? How do you open up a business? How do you do? I'm not going to ask him that. He's just not the right person. It's not a it's not a poo poo on him at all, right? It's just he's not the right one. So be very careful who you take advice from. Just because they like you and you like them doesn't mean that's a good source necessarily. You guys, you understand, right? Um, so my challenge on that piece then would be to find a mentor, a mentor or a coach. Isn't it interesting? The people at the top of their game, whether Sports is the easiest analogy, right? When Michael Jordan's at the top of his game and Kobe Bryant and RIP and um, uh, Tiger Woods and all these folks at the top of their game, they all have coaches. Oh, wait a minute. Why would someone at the top of their game, they're the best of the best, why do they think they need a coach? They're already the greatest. Success leaves clues, guys. We need someone to see us from the outside. We need a competent person who can still take us to that next level. Because there's always a next level. Always and always. So by the way, if you've never uh, heard of Michael Jordan's personal coach, not the team coach, his personal guy that would come in and help him when he needed it psychologically, this guy's name is Tim Grover. He wrote a book called Relentless. you got to kind of put on the, the, the adult pants for that one. He's very straight and very direct, but he shares a lot of great information. I just recommend that book. So Tim Grover is his name, and his the book that I like that he wrote is called Relentless. And he, he was actually Kobe Bryant's coach. He was Michael Jordan, uh, Dwayne Wade, and a few others. So this guy knows his stuff. Uh, okay, so the other part of the how is action. You gotta take action, right? This is the part no one likes talking about. Everyone likes planning. Everyone loves the idea of like thinking big and planning and having a great time, but when it comes to taking action, it's like, oh, and I gotta do it? Yep. You gotta do it. Two, two kinds of actions I wanna share with you for time reasons. First kind of action is called immediate action. Because some of you guess what that means. What is immediate action? It means now. Now, right? <laughs> Tomorrow? No. No, no, no. Today. Today. Oh. Right now. Next, next week, right? Next week. No. no. Like now. Now. Like, like right now. Right now. Good. Yes. Right now. Let's say today. Today. Immediate action. I know you're thinking it's going to be five o'clock. So it could be dinner time by the time you get out of here, and then you got you know dessert time, and then bedtime, and there's all this other stuff going on. I'm going to challenge you to take one small. Now, immediate action can be very, very small. One small step towards that goal you wrote down. Tiny. Tiny. Let me give you an example. What's the most popular New Year's resolution? Lose weight. Like, bingo, right? Lose weight, like, exactly. So if that was your goal, if your goal, your one thing is, man, I want to lose that 20, 30, whatever pounds. What's one small thing, small needed action you could do today before you hit the hay? That means you're right. Before you hit bed. Before you go to bed. What's the one small thing you can do today? Give me something else. Take a walk. After me. There you go. Take a walk. What Skip dessert. Skip dessert. <laughs> Eat smaller portions. Eat smaller portions. Yeah. Because you gotta eat them. Absolutely. You can you can Google a diet plan. You can uh, get a gym membership. Right. You can drop and do twenty push-ups. Right. Here's the power of it, though. When you take small but immediate action on a goal, you've already moved a millimeter or an inch closer to achieving it. You've already started to put cement that belief into your brain that, hey, maybe I can do it. You're already getting results. You're already on the path. Because most people never start. And the ones that start usually quit too soon. So that's a, another three-hour course. Um, okay, the other kind of action is called massive action. I'm not going to really spend any time on that. But massive action is very simple. It's the grind. It's those things you got to do every day. So, yeah, great. You got the gym membership. But now you actually have to work out your 
not every day. You have to work out three days a week, four days a week, and be consistent about it, right? And so massive action means small activities done over a long period of time is massive action, so it creates massive results. So that's the other kind. Okay, uh, last part of number three is association. Associations. I, Mr. Jeff over here talked about this a little bit. Associations are everything, aren't they? It's our environment. Our environment is everything. You can have the best seed in the world. This is like the seed that will produce the best harvest. But if it's sitting in a dark drawer, what good is it? If it's planted into poisoned soil, no good. But when I say soil, what do you think I'm talking about? So there's all kinds of things that create our environment. It's the people we can get. It's basically what you feed your mind. We're also concerned about what we feed our bodies, but very few people keep track of what we feed our minds. What are we listening to? What are we reading? Who are we around? All of these aspects, the environment, is all part of our how, isn't it? It's all part of how we're going to get there. It's either going to hold us back or it's going to let us move forward. Anyone here talk to themselves? Yeah. Uh, actually, we all do. That was a true question. It's called thinking, guys. It's called thinking. We all talk to ourselves. The question is, what are you saying to yourself? I did an article on this a couple months ago. You guys know why they call it television? When you watch television, they call it programming. Like you're watching a program and you want to see the programming from the TV station. It's not the TV station. It's programming because it's programming us visually and audio and, and audio wise. We're being programmed. We're being programmed by marketing. We're being programmed by school systems. We're being programmed by parents and by other people's ideas and thoughts. Okay. What are, what are you programming yourself? Or what if you can program yourself? It's a little different. So all this stuff, there's a lot, of, I don't want to get this, a lot of stuff we talk about with environments, habits, um, good habits, bad habits. So my challenge would be to have one positive association. Add sometime this week, add one positive association to your life. Maybe it's a book, maybe it's a YouTube channel, maybe it's a mentor, whatever it is. Add one positive association to your life. It goes along with my, my, my opinion about love. I think the only true thing out there is love. There's really nothing else. All this other stuff, racism and hate and misogyny and anger and all this stuff, that's just what happens when love isn't present. So when there's space, when there isn't love, if you're full of love, there's no room for that crap. So I, that's just my theory on that. Same thing here. If you're full of positivity and if you're really focused in the right environment, there's no room for the bad stuff. Right? All that bad air indoors, that can't, that can't affect you if you're self-contained in a good place. So... Okay, I don't know what my, how many time is, but I apologize. I can finish up or I can take some questions. How much more time do you think you have? I can just finish up and then take questions. If we that's can do that. Okay, so I'm going to finish up. I'm going to give you some, I'm gonna give you guys some good news. We'll finish up with some good news. Okay. New Year's is not January 1st. Mm -hmm. I know that's what we were told. It's not January 1st. When is New Year's? No, right now. Right now. Start over. One thing, please, please, please. So if you want to have a real 20, most people aren't going to have a 2020 out there. I don't know if you guys know that. Most people will not have an actual 2020. Oh, they'll have, they'll have a year. They won't die. I'm not saying they're going to die. I'm just saying they're going to be on 2019 part two, 2019 part three. I have some people that I used to work with, 1996 part 25. <laughs> same income, same problems, same stress, same issues, same results. Please, please don't do that. If you're on that path, it's not too late. To have a new year, something's got to change, doesn't it? Yes. Something's got to be different. Something's got to be better. So make it. Be intentional about that. Because if you don't live intentionally, you're going to have an accidental life. And I don't know what you think about accidents, but they usually aren't. They're not good. No. When my cat has an accident, that's not good. My wife drives a car and has an accident, that's not good. Accidents aren't good. Don't live accidentally. Live with intention. And I'll give you one last challenge. And I'm done. My last challenge become a 1%. I don't mean 
mean those rich people? There's a big misconception about one percenters, like, oh, these rich people got a thumb on us, or they're the ones destroying our economy. No, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about becoming a one percenter. I used to be an engineer, and I'm very good at math. So here's the math about being a one percenter. If you get one percent better every single day after a year's time, you'll be 37 times better. 37x. That's just getting 1% better every day. Or I'll put it onto a normal timeline. If you get 1% better a month in uh, 10 years, you'll have 3x. You'll be 3x better. What if you can increase your income 1% per month? That's it. Just 1% better, more income per month. In 10 years, in a decade, you'll have triple the income. Who likes to triple their income in 10 years? That's pretty good. I don't think too many people do that. Right? That's pretty damn good. The other 10 years after that, 10x. And then another 10 years after that, 37x. So my challenge, my final challenge, is become that one percent. <coughs> Get a little bit better. This isn't about hitting the home run. I know so many people want to hit the home run, don't we? No one? Just fun. Just fun. Just, just inch by inch. Inch by inch do it. Is that a deal? Okay. If anybody, I don't have any handouts or anything. If anyone wants to get a hold of me or talk more or yell, yell at me for being too loud and obnoxious, it's fine. I can take it. Uh, you can text me and you'll get all my contact info and access to my calendar. And There's actually a free ebook on my, on my thing. But if you text B-I-N-J for broke is no joke, B-I-N-J to 64600, you'll be able to contact me and we can get into more detail on having more fun I wanted to keep us on time here. So I'm open to any questions if you guys have. Otherwise, I'm just blessed and honored to even be here and share time with you. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Yes. So how do you know this is the individual that has the accomplish certain goals and that you're going to accomplish certain goals? Like if they, when they come see you, what's the process? It's very similar to what we just did. It's what do they want? Make sure it's in alignment. I always do things that are in alignment with the person. So if they want something that's not in alignment, we have to kind of review that. And then the process is the how part is really where I come in. The how part is the how's been done. Whether it be business, everyone's got the same issue on a same business. They don't want to prospect or they're afraid to talk to the person or they don't know how to close the sale or they don't know how to do any of these things. And it's just giving them those skills, walking them through, grabbing them by the hand, doing it together. Um, and that's really what a coach does. A coach doesn't tell you what to do. The coach asks you the right questions to give you those aha moments, and they grab you by the hand and come on, let's go. I've been here before. I know this looks scary, but I've been here before. Come on. How long does the consultation take? Oh, the consultation is, is a couple hours. Um, I thought you were asking how long success takes. <laughs> I don't know. How long does it take if I give you an apple seed? How long does it take to produce apples from it? I don't know. Right? You can approximate it, but honestly, you can. it's not when you win, it's that you win. And that's the key. It, it's not going to happen overnight, that's for sure. But I promise the process of getting to where you want to go. Everyone, has, I've had people ask me, like, you know, what's the key to happiness or key to success? In my opinion, happiness and success is a, is a state of being. It's not a thing you just get. So the process of moving from where you are to where you should be or want to be or the best version of yourself, that process is happiness. If you wake up every day with that sense of purpose, you know where you're going and you know why you're doing it and you know how you're impacting the world and how you're bringing value and how you're being compensated for it, how could you not be happy? It doesn't matter what's going on around you. Distractions are those things we see when we take our eyes off our goals. Because distractions don't exist. If you're trying to climb a mountain, you don't need to trip over a few pedal, pebbles. Who cares? But you know, most people are looking down at the pebbles and they're like, oh, these pebbles, gosh darn it, these pebbles. And then, look at the pebbles. There's your goal. So that's the key. It's just, it's, and then a coach keeps you focused. Accountability. There's all sorts of things you need to get to talk about today. But. Yes, sir. Your first step was knowing what you want. So what is your advice to someone who doesn't know what they want? Mm. So, so, so they don't know anything that they want. They have, they don't have any direction, but they want to go somewhere. They don't know where that, what that is. How would you coach them into finding 
But they want to come like that three person. Yeah. Number one. Usually I do I do a service I call identity discovery and delivery, IDD. And the, I think the first step for some people is just figuring out what you are. So before what do you want comes what are you? Not who are you, because that's usually just what you were told growing up. And not what do you do, because that's just a name on your business card. What do you you are not what you do. What are you? What is your identity? What does your life mean? And and that usually gets them going. If not, I have them do this one thing, which I'll share with you guys. It's wonderful. If you haven't done it, please try it. Write your eulogy. Oh. Wow. You want to talk about the ultimate goal study? Write your eulogy. Right? I want to know who's coming to your funeral. What are they going to say about you? How did you impact their life? What did your life mean? What was your legacy? What did you leave behind? Was it? What was your mark in the world? Wow. Other than a skid mark. Don't, don't be a skid mark. Like, what did you really, that was a joke. What did you really mean? <laughs> no, not a very good one. So what's your sense? But you know what I mean? What what did your life mean? Don't be a don't be a, a silent letter and an unspoken word. Have something. Right? Make it worth it, guys. Because I know I don't that all your house have got awesome. That was awesome. Alright, any other so questions? Good text. What to what number? B I N J, so uh, Bravo India, November Juliet, team 64600. Okay. Yes. And you'll get all my contact info, you'll be able to talk to me. And I have one question, a personal question. Yeah. Is there a reason why you wear two watches? <laughs> <laughs> one, okay, there's two reasons I wear two watches. Yeah. One, it's a great conversation starter, and I get to ask people, what if you had twice as many hours in your day? Okay. Uh, okay. What, would you, what would you do? Because I can show you how to do that. Uh, but the real reason, honestly, is this is um, a, bio a biometric watch, so it tracks my steps and my workouts okay. and my sleep. And this is the watch I actually like. So <laughs> I didn't know what to do. So I, 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 